Now in this video, we're going to add trim texturing sheets to the cables. So in Houdini, we already built our cable. So if you followed along previous videos, you can have something similar like you see here. So we're going to immediately jump into our node over here. And we want to go here at the bottom and do a UV pass and also doing a trim pass. So with the sweep node, it's actually quite easy to get UVs. So we're just going to go to UVs and attributes and we hit enable compute UVs. And by default, you should see that there are UVs generated. So if I switch to my UV properties, it's now having a nice UV. So the same here for then the small cables. So these are the small ones. We go to UVs and we hit compute UV. So we have the same nice UVs as the mesh. So both meshes have now sort of like been unwrapped. So now the next step would then be making this into a trim texturing node. We can grab the trim nodes. So we have two trim nodes that we need to use. So we have the utility one. So here we need to say, what is my trim layout? And then we have actually the trim uh, calculator. So to automatically place the trims on the, or the UVs on the trim spots. And these are the two nodes we're gonna use. Now, before I plug in everything, there are a couple things we need to set up. So first of all, let's look here at our data that we have now. So it's properly being unwrapped, but it's actually being placed in a vertical way. So the UVs are going up. So I would like to rotate that 90 degrees. So we can use the UV transform. And with that, if we just plug it in over here, we can grab the handle and rotate this 90 degrees. So now we are in the direction of my trim sheet. So my trim sheet is also having horizontal lines. So this is ready for my first input, which will be here the geometry. And then my second input is here the trim texture. So let's create a trim texture over here. So let's switch back to our geometry network. And in this node, there are a few settings. So we can either generate the trim from an input. So we need to then make this or we can also generate from ID map if you have that. So a quick example of ID map here. So you can see that from a texture filled in here, uh, we can generate these layouts uh, automatically. So you can try that and, and do that. So in case you don't have a texture available, we can switch back to uh, input here and we can make something ourselves. So let's quickly do that. So we're gonna start it just by saying a grid and this grid is gonna then represent the layout of the trim sheet. So if you look at this, we want to maybe take the size of one by one. So it's just like one unit. And we also here want to change the rows and columns based on how many trims we have. So if, for example, this is my trim sheet, so this is the ID map for that. I can see I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different areas of uh, where the trim texture could be. So let's recreate that. So over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to here fill in number eight because I have seven uh, positions. So we have to do plus one and the columns will be number two. So we, now we have the spacings ready. So the next step would then be doing a UV projector and we plug it over here and we say initialize and press initialize. So we might actually need to rotate this the other way around like so. And what we're also going to do now is actually visualize our UV. So we're going to use the quick shade node and we can plug in our texture. So this is then our texture. So what we have to do now is jump back to our grid, click on the grid. Then we're going to press number two on the keyboard and that should actually switch to editing mode. So we can actually select the vertex here. And now we're going to move the lines basically manually to where they need to be. So I'm gonna select these two points and press T for moving. This automatically do, creates an edit node, which is able to edit geometry. And we're just gonna move them in the right position. So we'll just speed up this part here. So that is done. So if I now check my wireframe, they should be at the exact same locations as my uh, layout of the trim sheet. Now to wrap this up, we need to do a split and we're going to use uh, split primitives and disable this toggle. And normally now every primitive is actually separated. 
as you can see if i move this up they don't connect to each other anymore so that's what the split is just doing then we plug this in into the uh, utility tool then we click here that we have an input and we say initialize and it will automatically figure out what your trim sheets are so as you can see it automatically will figure it out and this is then ready to continue further in our system we plug this in into our automatic trim tool lets me switch to the uv view and you can see that this is now being placed in a slot for my trim sheet so if i now would grab the trim sheet over here and plug it over here we should now see a proper result where we have just that orange part being here so of course this is based on the size of the input so in my situation all the cables are the same size of course same uv size so let's make this a bit interesting and go back here and include our small cables so our small cables need to of course also have a uv rotation and i want to scale them smaller so right now they are just fitting in the zero to one range same as the bigger cables so here in this transform we're going to grab the scale hold the middle mouse and we're going to lower this and now we can use this over here so when i merge this i can see i have my big cable here and my small cable over here so now let's use this as input for my trim tool uh, we still currently have everything on the orange layer so maybe let's go back and play a bit with the uv sizing so maybe our main cable should not be uh, this huge in size so maybe let's just scale this a bit down to 0.6 and our small cables we can just maybe reduce this to maybe like a very small value just to see if the tool works well and you can see that this gives a better uh, layout here so we now should have different uh, results as you can see this is different so now we can always go back here and if we change the size you will notice of course that it will jump into a different uh, trim texture layouts so you can play around with that so if i go to the uv view uh, you can see that it will jump up to whatever things it work would work the best and that's basically how this tool will work so in this case, we have to do a bit of manual tweaks here with this UVs to set the correct size. If you have a, you can of course plug in other shapes, like you can just plug in a box or another object you want to have the trim sheet working on and you can play around with it. We can even make this more interesting by having more variation in here. Let's say we do a loop and we change the scale. So we can have a similar idea of, of for example, where we, did a loop over here and changed for example something or each loop so what we can do is we can do a loop for each connected piece so this is going to basically loop over each single cable so there are 15 cables now so as you can see this is for example cable one and it will be a loop individually over them so we're going to grab or if we transform and place that in here and what we can do again is we need to have that a uh, third node which is the metadata so we can click here the node to so import the data and same as before uh, we're going to create a spare input so create spare input all the way at the bottom link those two nodes and those nodes are now internally connected and here at the scaling what we can say is multiply this value by for example the detail of the spare input so minus one then look for the value iteration of the loop iteration and we have then again index zero and now we will have a variation here in scale so what is maybe even a better idea of doing here is including a random as well so we're going to get a random value from the iteration number so these are like two things you can do at once here and now we also need to link this to the other scaling values and what we can do is we can just grab this value and drag it over here and we say relative channel reference and now we can copy paste this as well over here 
And now this is a direct reference or a direct linking to what we fill in here. So whenever I type something in here, it will automatically be filled in here as well. So we can check the values and we can see that they are all the same. So if I now go to my UV, I can see that we have for each time we create a cable, we have now a different UV set or scale. So that's quite interesting to, to have now. And if I would plug this or redirect the line here, uh, we should now be able to see more variation in the cables. And that looks a bit more interesting as we have more and more variation. So that was almost it for this video. So let's wrap this up by plugging this in over here. So this is now my final output. So we're going to plug it in over here. We don't need to quick shade. This was only for viewing in Houdini. We're going to move this over here so we can keep that structure. And what we don't need anymore is those two materials for Unreal. So we can delete those. And all the way at the end, I can now use my Unreal material uh, for the trim sheet. So Unreal material. And we can now fill in a reference to that material that we want in Unreal with the trim data. So I'm going to round up this video here. If you want to watch more about how to bring this in Unreal, you can watch the Unreal video. And then you can combine it with things you saw here. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.